Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome to Pikmin? Well, where did this come from? Well, it's the summer of Pikmin with Pikmin 4 on the horizon, and I had an itch that I needed to scratch. And thankfully, Nintendo heard my calls for action, and they were decided to release Pikmin 1 and 2 on the Switch in glorious HD. So now we can play the game in widescreen, beautiful retextured models, and experience the game for the first time on this channel. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Hopefully you have a lot of fun, and we're gonna be experiencing Pikmin way back from the origins of this wonderful series. Let's get started. Well, that didn't look good. And as per the standard of the Pikmin franchise, we have Crash Landed on PNF 404, our intrepid hero, of course, Captain Olimar, for the first time visiting Earth, along with his precious dolphin in very rough shape. My game is Captain Olimar, traveling through space. My ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out and I woke on the surface of a weird planet. With so many parts lost, the skeletal hull is a painful sight. The engine's gone and I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my sensors indicate that this planet has high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for 30 days. But we need to repair the dolphin before then. All right. So here we are on Earth once again, or for the first time, technically. But once again, to all of you viewers, if you're new to the channel, thanks for joining me. If you are a return viewer, welcome back. This is the third Pikmin game I played on this channel. Three, two, and now one. Decided to go back to the origin story and have some fun before Pikmin 4 comes out. A strange thing has appeared before me. I'd barely begun my search and reared up and dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it a machine? It resembles a vegetable on my home planet that we call the onion. So there you go. So time to harvest our very first ever Pikmin on this channel today, right now, in this game. There you go. And of course, the game will start us off with red Pikmin. Although, oddly enough, Pikmin 3 started you with yellow Pikmin, but it depends upon what explorer you had. The seed that the onion dropped took root in the soil and has now produced an adorable little sprout. This sprout emits a strange light and it sways back and forth. Can I, cannot help but think it's calling to me. So there you go. This is just very tutorialese language. Lots of gaming jargon that it's going to throw at you to get you used to what it's like to play this game. Extraordinary, when I plucked the sprout, it turned out to be a living creature, not a plant. Plucking it has done no visible damage, it just stands there. Its shape is similar to the Pick-Pick brand carrots that I love so much. I'll call it a Pikmin. So there you go. Um, this is where you get your first opportunity to learn about why Pikmin are called Pikmin. So the Pick-Pick carrots that Captain Olimar loves so much on his home planet of Hokitate inspired him to name this creature the Pikmin. There you go. So this Pikmin game originally came out on the GameCube way back in the early 2000s. It's the first of three and it was a pretty niche, unbecoming title at the time, but it's since blossomed into a beloved cult classic. Astonishing, the onion has sown more seeds. The red pellet is uh, harvested after cutting down a flower, which is the food, of course, and the onion is the incubator. I'm going to probably Try to be a little bit light on the reading, because that's kind of boring. If you want to go ahead and read through the little uh, text blurbs that are on the screen, feel free to um, to pause the video and read those to at your leisure, whatever you're into. Uh, I just know that personally, just reading the uh, on-screen text is not the most becoming of a fun Let's Play, so I'm not going to do that. But anyway, we have our first little squad of Pikmin. We have five of them here. And wouldn't you know it, there's a perfect five pellet right here that we can have them take back. This first day is all just about propagating Pikmin. You're going to be growing 25 of them, which you only will essentially need 20 to finish the day. But we're going to grow the full 25 and take advantage of that. So the controls of this game are very similar to the previous game. You know, you've got your whistle. You have your ability to eventually direct your Pikmin. It's not letting me do that yet because I don't have that. Well, there it is. Um, so if you hold the, the L shoulder button and then you use the right control stick, that's supposed to simulate the C stick. I don't love that. Uh, it was a little tricky for me to figure out at first until I saw the control scheme pop up on screen. It doesn't really make a lot of sense that they wouldn't just let you use the right control stick like you used to do with the C stick before, because it's got the same amount of 
control maneuverability as a GameCube controller was. I'm using the Pro controller, of course. But, um, yeah, so I don't really know why they did that. But obviously, this is how you're going to maneuver your squad of Pikmin to go and attack enemies, pick up prizes, gather food, nectar, all of those things. Just like you do in the previous games. So it is something to be mindful of if you're not used to that. It is a bit of an adjustment, but it's not too bad. The Pikmin are as curious as children. They form groups to perform tasks that would be impossible for an individual. Plus, we can groom them. A, gl a glimmer of hope has begun to shine in my heart. Don't do that to kids. If I can make use of their skills, perhaps I can fix my ship. Slavery. All right. Approach and hold A to pick sprouts. Grab Pikmin. Call them. Dismiss. Um, yeah. So there you go. You can move the uh, camera all around if you need to. Plenty of options to uh, essentially guide your Pikmin in the ways that you need it to. But yeah. Anyway. Um, the game is pretty self-explanatory at the beginning. There isn't really a ton that you can do. Um, I'm not planning on really blasting through this game. I'm going to take it kind of slow just because this game is very short. You get 30 days, but I don't foresee this taking 30 days. Um, now I say that, that might turn out to be a bit of a, a poo-poo in me eventually, but I don't think that it should take that long. I feel like I'm a little bit better at this game than that that hopefully I would be equipped, having played the second and third varieties, that that won't create too many problems for me. Anyway, now that we have that, we can take one of our Pikmin up here, and using our newfound ability to control Pikmin, using our boop a doop a doop that's the classic way, we will have this guy come over here and pick up this pellet, there you go. And I believe that is the last opportunity for growing Pikmin that you'll have today, at the very least. And like I mentioned before, you only need 20 to officially beat this first level. When many Pikmin seeds sprout at once, I find it tedious. So if you hold A, basically, um, you can pick them up. Also, he's referring to when they're idle, they are glowing uh, like a dim color. And then when they're fully active, of course, they'll be their full bright red. So I guess that's how you know whether your Pikmin are fully established or not. I don't know why it tells you it like that. Did I miss something? I feel like I missed a... Yes, I missed one. Here we go. You're supposed to have 25, like I mentioned, but um, yeah, you don't need the full 25 to finish this day. So while that Pikmin is... Well, those two Pikmin are bringing it over there. We're going to head to our very first ship part, which we very casually walked past, but this is the engine. Look at those beautiful early 2000s textures. Wonderful. Talk about HD. Amazing. There's no mistaking it. My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I've stumbled upon the most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but how will I get it back to the dolphin? Well, it's funny you should ask. Anyway, so using your boop a doop a doop, that's a fantastic way to get your Pikmin to do large scale tasks in a group. And you'll need to do that many, many, many times when you're fighting enemies when you are trying to carry something back, when you are collecting nectar, when you're attacking a wall, all kinds of things. So there's many various applications for being able to use that. It's something that you're gonna have to do, that you've had to do in all the other Pikmin games, so this is not new. Um, and in doing so, it convinces your Pikmin to work together. As you saw, that Pikmin was gonna be idle, and because I hadn't whistled, it actually it still has the idle animation, but that's okay. So as they're taking it back, I just wanted to thank everybody for, for joining this new Pikmin Let's Play. Eastward's going to be on a little bit of a hiatus while I scratch this Pikmin itch. And as I enjoy playing through this one on the channel, I'll be playing through Pikmin 4 casually, and then maybe someday I'll be able to play Pikmin 4 on the channel as well. But there you go, that's our first ship part. Well done, everybody. Congratulations. The game is beaten. No. We actually need to get an abundance of ship parts. The game tells you that you have 30 days to do this, 29 after this one. And then you need to gather 29 ship parts. I don't believe that that's actually true. I think that that's for the best ending to get all the ship parts, which I'll be doing. But I don't believe that you need all of them in order to be successful. I don't remember exactly how many it is, but I want to say it's like three quarters will get you a successful liftoff back to Hokotate. Glorious. With the help of these Pikmin, I've taken a huge step back toward home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning. But what has become of the remaining parts? That starts tomorrow. So here's your first end of day sequence. 
This one is completely dependent on the game. The first day is, of course, on rails. And then after that, you'll be able to take care of the remaining parts of the mission yourself. You can do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Or onion. But there you go. And the red onion beautifully lifts off with us. With its kind of gross, spindly little legs. There you go. Here is journal entry number one. One day since impact. I've somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lift off with us. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight? Or they've merely decided to join me for the reasons. Either way, it seems they'll help me again tomorrow. Slavery. Um, the dolphin is missing 29 parts. If I can't recover them all, I won't be able to return home. Basically just telling you, you got 29 more days to do it. And this is why this game was pretty controversial at the time. And when I say controversial, I mean just within the realm of like real-time strategy. This one, people are a little divisive about just because they don't like the time limit. But with a real-time strategy game, if you don't have some sort of agency like this, it kind of makes it not really that fun. I think the first game is fine. Obviously, they removed that in the second game. You have the day and night cycle, but in the second game, you could obviously take as much time as you want underground. So this one, nothing like that. It's all above ground, sort of, and you'll have 29 more days to do it. So next time on the second day, we're going to be going to the Forest of Hope, which he says he's going to explore tomorrow. I'm going to explore that heckin' place right now, because why not? Like I said, maybe taking my time and uh, having fun with this one. It's not going to take me 30 days to beat this game, and I am going to beat it off completely with all the parts gathered. Now, as you saw here in the impact site, there actually is another part that you can get, just one part, and you actually have to wait a few days before you can get it to have the necessary Pikmin to do so. It's very silly and pointless, but instead, um, there are eight parts to get in the Forest of Hope, so let's go ahead and get started. Day number two. I was hoping to do a day and episode, but I realized that this game is so short that um, there's no real need to do that. So I'm just going to play the game to what feels good. You know, when you're playing with yourself, you just got to play with what feels good. All right. So day two, here we are. Dolphin has returned to the surface along with the Pikmin's onion. Being alone in this strange planet makes me feel uneasy. So go to the onion, get your Pikmin out and start harvesting. So once again, that's pretty much all you can do. Um, the wise thing to do, though, is uh, using your boop -a doop -a doop powers is, as we can see here, the short grass that we are familiar with from uh, Pikmin 2 and Pikmin 3, this produces nectar that our Pikmin really, really love. So there it is, the yellow nectar, when they drink it, instantly mature into flowers. It's pretty important that you do this just because early going, if you don't um, nectar your Pikmin, um, it just makes everything a lot slower. You know, flower Pikmin are, of course, going to be your your bread and butter through this let's play. So there you go. Nope, I don't want to do that. Actually, I'm trying to get to this Pelopozy. It's going to walk around here. And I believe that's the only set of two that you can do. But we're going to set the remaining Pikmin that we have here, our flower Pikmin, which should be statistically better at attacking and getting work done. So we will allow them to bonk their beautiful little heads against this first gate. Having your flower Pikmin be the ones to do this instead of unflowered one will make the process obviously a lot faster. So just trust me that you're going to want that. So now we have three extra Pikmin. These guys can have some nectar too. And then they can get back to work, okay? No time for slacking. Get in there. I think I actually probably should have saved a little bit of that nectar for this guy, but that's okay. I don't know if I... Oh, there's, there's a little bit left. Never mind. Everything is fine. The day has been saved. He gets that entire ball of nectar to himself, so he is flying so high right now. But as you can see in the distance, we have a very familiar enemy, the bull board. We have more pellet posies that are around the way that we will take care of in a moment. But this day is all about propagating your Pikmin. Maybe we'll meet some new friends. Who knows? But first things first, of course, one of the most fulfilling things. You can basically still do it in this game as you did in the previous game, is with a well-timed shot, you can kill a bull board and one throw. So there you go. We're gonna, of course, propagate all of these pellet posies and have all of our Pikmin bring these guys back to the onion. We're gonna want to have as many Pikmin as we possibly can going forward. So of course, growing a bunch of red Pikmin in the start is advantageous to you. We will go ahead and kill both of these bull borbs too. 
One of the things you have to be mindful of in this game is the fact that this game is the first in a series. So it is very rudimentary. Um, there will be moments where it will be absolutely frustrating with how the game is coded and how the enemies and Pikmin will react in certain circumstances, which was greatly improved in the second game and of course in the third. So you just have to be mindful of the fact that this was the first game and so they were still figuring it out. I think that they still did a wonderful job and uh, I'm very thankful that they were able to break ground on one of my favorite series that is very near and dear to my heart that I will, of course, be charmed by forever. So there we go. So now we've got... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, now that we've got more Pikmin, we can, of course, split up and have some multiple tasks done. We can carry this very dead bull boar back. We can have our Pikmin gather around together and grab this 10 pellet, which is nice. And then while that's happening, we can, of course, have our recently grown Pikmin. We can pluck them, which in this game, no pluck a phone, which in Pikmin 2, if you remember, we didn't really get that until very late anyway. So um, you're going to have to just make do with doing this by hand. And you don't have two captains, so it's just Olimar doing all the hard work by himself, as a good capitalist does. So there you go. We're going to be growing a lot of Pikmin today. Not just of the red variety. Spoilers. So there you go. Um but we're gonna grow all these guys first. And so um, I really would like the game to not zoom in on me when I'm not ready for it. There we go. So now we can grow these Pikmin too. Um, we have some flower Pikmin on our squad. We have some leaf Pikmin on our squad and uh, I'll have them grab that nectar. What is funny though, is I don't know if it was a, like it was obviously programmed in this game on purpose, but it is possible. And I don't know if this is a thing that's in the other Pikmin games, but it is entirely possible for your Pikmin to slip and fall which can cause problems, I'm assuming, if you are trying to do well-coordinated missions. But yeah, they can definitely slip and fall, which is uh, visually funny, but it also can have ramifications when you're trying to do things. So anyway, um, that's not a big deal. This is actually uh, a very out in the open, easy ship part to get. It's the Eternal Fuel Dynamo, has an unlimited energy supply. I won't have to worry about serving, saving electricity anymore. Turn the AC up. This will make my fight for survival a bit easier. All right, so go ahead and boop a doop a doop your Pikmin. Half our squad can take care of that, or two thirds of our squad. And as you can see, we actually have um, some mysterious explosives here in this can. I wonder what these could be. We're just gonna actually sneak right past you here, Mama Boborb, and we're gonna get our other Pikmin here started on uh, taking down this wall. Don't worry, I'm not going to make any 1980s references. But yeah, there's um, there's a lot that you can do on this second day. If you want to move... Oh, oh, excuse me, sorry. Sorry for trying to give information to my viewers. Okay, the Eternal Fuel Dynamo. Should light things up, no more candles for me. Now recover two out of 30 parts. If I can find just three more, should be able to increase the ship's capabilities. There is a bridge right there that you can go and knock down if you want to. That's up to you. There's actually a sneaky trick that you can do of um, tossing some of your Pikmin in the water to scoot them over the little gap there and then have them um, have them go to the other side. But I don't feel confident in my ability to do that and I don't want to murder my Pikmin, so I will not be doing that. That is not part of my MO. But what I will be doing, because this is a lot of fun, we'll have this in just a second. One of the best things in the game is abject murder. Go get him in the buns. Mm. Oh, she hates it. She doesn't like it when we smack her buns. So there you go. Wasn't exactly the most, uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing way to do that, but it's fine. So we're gonna use the rest of our squad to knock down that wall. And then we're actually gonna save this because we don't need that many red Pikmin. As you'll see here shortly, uh, it's a little bit of a of an overabundance, so we won't be worrying about getting these all these Pikmin at one time because it does prevent you, as you all will remember, the most you can get. I forgot to get these guys one more. I was like, why isn't there five more Pikmin? Um, the most you can have on the field at one time is 100, so you're going to need to be mindful of that. But anyway, I'm actually going to go ahead and 
the coming of noon. Got to pay attention to the sun meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, this just tells you that you only have so much time and the meter at the top of the screen will let you know how far into the day you are. So there you go. So now that we've got this, I'm going to go ahead and plug these Pikmin real quick. I don't actually need any of these, um, any of these guys. So I'm going to put them back. We need to make room on the field, as you'll see in a moment. And those Pikmin will, of course, make that worse. We'll put those ones back, though. So now we have our full squad. You come back here. You sneak right on past them. Look what we have here, viewers. Two onions in one day. Oh, my goodness. Red and yellow. It's a McDonald's kind of day. Please don't sue me at McDonald's. All right. So there you go. You get your red Pikmin. You get your yellow Pikmin all in one day. Once this one decides to finally sprout, we can grab it and then start propagating our yellow Pikmin. Very cool. And our introduction to our big eared companions the electric inducing yellow Pikmin. Color's different, but it seems to be a Pikmin nonetheless. It's got very large ears, and it may weigh less, weigh less than the others, of course. If you remember, uh, yellow Pikmin can be thrown um, much further. So that's obviously a nice dynamic. And in the process of that happening, we're gonna go ahead and murder this bull board. See you, bye. And then we're going to kill its mom. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is unintended. Hopefully you don't eat my Pikmin. This is why red Pikmin are great though. And honestly, the easiest to qualify is the best ones in the game. Um, that's not not even remotely a question. I would say, unfortunately, the worst Pikmin in this game are probably the yellow Pikmin just because they are uh, a lot harder to direct when you throw them. And they're, the, they're some of the weakest fighters. So not really great um, to try to deal with, but you know, you take what you're given. Oh, I want you to continue to do that. And here's a little bit of a breakthrough. This is the, of course, the bomb rocks. In this game, only yellow Pikmin are able to carry the bomb rocks. So just be mindful of that. Um, you can throw the bomb rock. Where are you going? Did you just kill yourself? Okay. Bomb rocks are dangerous, so you take careful of the stone walls. Yeah, I think that... Oh, he just... <laughs> okay, so that Pikmin definitely just killed itself. Um, that was not meant to happen that way. I was not trying to throw it over the wall. I was trying to throw it at the wall, but that's okay. Um, and I don't know if this will cause a train, chain reaction. No, it does not. Okay. So this obviously is how you open up the uh, remaining part of this area. Nope. Get over here. I think you can choose which uh, type of yellow Pikmin you want, whether it's a bomb rock, yellow Pikmin, or just a regular variety. Um, so we're going to have our yellow Pikmin. We're going to try to grow them. Pretty cool that I had my first uh, death already, accidentally, by throwing it over the wall and having it explode itself. Very cool. Super cool and fun. But we're going to need to be growing a lot more of these yellow Pikmin as fast as we can before day ends. So we've already gotten a part today, which is good. Um, and then you can uh, have your yellow Pikmin, of course, um, pick up the bomb rocks in the same way. You can boop a doop a doop them into the bomb rocks, which is nice. We're gonna to want to get a healthy crew of yellows for the future. Well, apparently the red ones were helping out. That's very nice of you, reds. Good job. Helping out your yellow compatriots. And the same rules apply in this game as they do in other Pikmin's is that uh, if you do have more of a certain color working together to carry something, the majority rule will reign supreme. So we'll we'll just take an example of that right here. Is um, we're just gonna throw. Well, I want this to be no. I want this to be primarily yellow, so we're gonna go ahead and sh well, hold on. I don't think I can subdivide Pikmin in the way that I did with the other with the other uh, Pikmin games. You can't choose your squad unless you decommission them first. All right, so there you go. So a little bit of reds, a little bit of yellows. Everybody's helping out. Don't you dare take this anywhere besides that yellow. There we go. Okay, so we got the split squad here. Like I said, I'm gonna be taking my time on this one. Uh, not in any sort of a rush, I'm not trying to speed run. Um, I'm just trying to make as many Pikmin as I can, get as many parts as I can. If you come back here, obviously there's another part. You can kill these bulwars really quickly. Um, and you can get yourself eaten too, apparently. Um, 
We will, of course, be losing Pikmin as we play this game because I'm not great at it. <laughs> but there's these uh, sheer wig, sheer grub things that are annoying, of course. Um, we're not going to worry about that. But I do want to grab this. And take this back to the onion. This will be the another part that we'll grab today. And we'll surround it with more. I'm not really super worried about um, growing Pikmin at this point because I already have 100. It's my whimsical radar with this. I'll be able to see all nearby ship parts. Very nice. So let's go ahead and surround it so we can get it back as fast as possible. Hopefully we'll have time to do that. We'll grab all of our yellows. And we'll potentially be able to blow up that uh, that bombable wall that was next to us. You can just open up this area as much as you want to. Like I said, I am taking my time. You don't have to do that if you want to go through this area faster. I have seen, as far as I'm aware of, um, I've seen run-throughs of this game where people have done this entire area in a day, which is absurd to me, but, you know, that's obviously not my MO. That's not what I'm trying to do, so. Right, let's have all of our yellows, all of our yellows. Grab bomb rocks here. Okay, beautiful. Okay, and then we will do four. I think four is like the most you can do before you start to cause problems. Okay, that's down. And then I thought that there was another no, that's pretty good for now. And, of course, you can't take the bomb rocks with you, so no sense in worrying about that. But, um, that ship part number three, two in one day, pretty good. Not super worried about it. We'll be fine. We're ahead of schedule already. If you get a part of the day, you're fine. The Whimsical Radar. This important part can detect the locations of other missing ship parts. Oh, yeah. Now we're covered three out of 30. You can find two more, then you'll be able to increase your ship's capabilities. Actually, let's go ahead and have them... Um, all work together to take this. Nope, I want this to be yellow. Let's go ahead and thank you. Okay, so you just need to make sure that uh, you have all your Pikmin under your control by the end of the day. If you don't, then your Pikmin will, the ones that aren't under your control will be considered stranded. So just be mindful of that. I think we should be able to make this back to the yellow onion, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there's another yellow one that fell. Yeah, not like my odds. That's okay. I mean, I have a pretty good, a pretty good outcropping of yellows as it is. I'm not worried about it. It's a pretty good second day. Let's go make sure that we have a hundred under our command when we go back to the old shippy poo. And of course, when you leave your Pikmin uh, buried, they will flower on their own over time. So there's no real rush to pluck your Pikmin if you don't need to. Doing so is up to your discretion, but. As you can see, that's pretty much it. Actually, you know what? We can do... Hold on. Oh, I was going to be all fancy, but I decided not to. Anyway, it's fine. We're just going to go ahead and... Uh, how do we go to... Go to Sunset. Hold on. Make sure I have all these Pikmin under my command. That'd be a really dumb way to lose one. Let's just go to Sunset now. Okay. A job well done, everybody. Day two in the books. I'm not sure exactly how going forward I'll do these, if it's going to be like a day at a time or what, but... Depends upon how much I can accomplish. If I need a full day or not, I will probably try to use each day to its completion, if possible. But there you go. We have successfully got the radar and the, the dynamo, so we have more power. More power! And that is all for day two. Two days after since impact. It appears that many of my ship's parts have landed in this region. If I can just recover the parts of my radar, I should be able to use my radar screen. It'd improve my chances. Yeah, there seems to be many hostile life forms here. If I'm damaged, I can return to the ship and it'll repair my suit. Pretty neat. There you go. So I did lose three Pikmin today because I'm stupid, but so far we've made 129. Very, very good. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you exactly the breakdown of what Pikmin you have, but you can do that once you go up the respective onions so there you go all right so far so good and we'll be taking on day three in the next episode thanks for watching everybody i've been d mike this has been pikmin and i'll see you next time bye <laughs>